welcome back to DigiTalk. Uh, this is the first video of IBM WebSphere series. Okay, and this first video is specifically for the engineers who is having knowledge of web logic. Okay, so in this video, I am going to give you a small comparison of the different components of the WebSphere along with the web logic. Okay, so in web logic, we have a a uh, lot of different uh, uh, resources and configurations like in the component for, for example we have a domain cluster admin server manage server admin console right there are a lot of uh, uh, other components are there okay and when we go to the web sphere okay so web sphere is also a java based application server okay so if we have a knowledge of the web logic that it is easy for you to work on the web sphere as well even not on web sphere on any of the application server because the functionalities are almost same okay but certain some of the options or you can say the some terms are get changed okay and then if you have a knowledge of that terms okay then you can easily work on that particular application server as well okay and apart from that there are a lot of differences that are other as well but still if you have a knowledge of web logic then you can easily work on the other application server as well okay and it is completely true in the reverse order as well if you have a knowledge of web sphere then you can easily work on the web logic and some other application server as well Okay, so in this first video, I'm just going to give you a side by side comparison of the core component of the web sphere in comparison with the web logic. Okay, so let us be begin with the comparison of the core component. So now let's start with the web logic. Okay, so in the web logic, we have a domain. Okay, this is the first thing that we learn when we when we start learning about the web logic. Okay, so domain is a a uh, logical entity which is a complete group of the all of the resources which we have in the web logic okay so domain is the first thing that we create after the installation of the web logic and after that we configure all the resources inside that domain okay and each domain will have only one admin server and apart from that it has many managed servers and then uh, data sources and then you can have a machine node manager and a lot of configurations but the in a nutshell, what you can say is that domain is a logical entity which contain all of the resources of the web logic, right? Similarly, if you if we go in the web sphere, okay, the corresponding term is cell. So cell is similarly to the domain in the web logic server, and this cell contain all of the resources of the web sphere. Okay, so that means just like the domain, when we install the web sphere. Okay, the first thing that we do, uh, we create after the installation is a cell, which is just like a domain. Okay, some terminologies, some terminologies are different. Okay, that we will cover in the future sessions in detail. Okay, but as of now, what you can understand, if someone is telling you the cell, and if you have a knowledge of uh, web logic, then you can consider this cell as a domain in the web logic server, which will contain all of the resources of the web sphere. Second, we know that each and every domain has one admin server, right? So, uh, which host your admin console, okay? And this is a central uh, point of contact for the complete end-to-end -end management and configurations of the all the domain configuration resources, right? Now, similarly, if we go to the web sphere, okay, then we have a corresponding deployment manager, which is also called the network deployment manager. Okay, so this deployment manager is 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 just like corresponding to the admin server in the web logic server. Okay, and this is automatically configured, or it is when we when we install the web sphere in the deployment manager mode, or you can say by using the deployment manager software of the IBM web sphere. Okay, so this we are going to learn in the future videos about when we'll talk about the different additions of the web spheres and then when we'll go for the installation of the web sphere in the different modes. Okay, and that time we will see it in detail. But as of now, what we can uh, consider this deployment manager or which is also called the uh, network deployment manager, it, it is completely corresponding to the admin server, right? And now after the admin server, we will have a admin console. Right, which is a central uh, graphical user interface which we use for the configuration of the domain resources right and similarly if we go to the web sphere the corresponding term is sometime it is also called us with the same name which is called the admin console okay sometime it is called the dom deployment manager or the management console these are the different terms that is referred when we talk about the admin console in the web sphere okay so some some of the engineers may say it as the admin console 
but somewhere it may refer as the deployment manager console or the management console when we talk about the web sphere okay the next one is the managed server so now inside a domain we as i said i have we have a one admin server and then we have a one admin console which deployed on the admin server in the web logic right and apart from that we have the feature where we can we can create the multiple managed servers right and managed server is the uh, server where we deploy our application which is applica which is accessible to the outer world right so this is a generic strategy where we deploy all of the applications of the managed server there is no limitations of the managed server in a domain it is completely based on your hardware configuration if you have a high hardware configuration then you can configure n number of managed servers in a domain right so now the corresponding entity when we talk about the web sphere which is called the simple server or sometimes it is called the app server or the with the same name which is called the managed server okay so most of the time you will see the uh, the reference of uh, the managed server in web sphere as only server or app server but sometime it also referred as managed servers but the corresponding entry if you talk about the web sphere uh, in comparison with the web uh, web logic server which is called server or app server right and then we have a cluster so what is a cluster a cluster is a group of managed servers and why we do the grouping of managed servers it is for the high availability load balancing and failover right that means we will have a multiple managed server inside a cluster and we deploy the same application across the cluster so that the same application will be uh, accessible or will be deployed on each and every managed server which we which is part of the cluster so if any of the managed server get crashed the application will be accessible from the other managed servers right and apart from that we will have a failover functionalities like if uh, your session is connected to one of the backend managed server and if that managed server get crash in between when your session is connected then your session with along with the session data will fail over to the other managed server in the cluster right and along with that you can have a load balancing of the request as well between your multiple managed server which is there in your cluster right and now when we talk about the web sphere the corresponding term is same in web sphere also it is called a cluster so now when we say uh, the cluster in the web, web logic then we say it is a collection or a grouping of the managed servers and now when we go to the web sphere we can say it again this in the same way it is a collection of the managed servers or specifically you can say it is a collection of different servers or you can say it is a collection of different app servers when we talk about the web sphere right and then we have a option which is called machine right so machine is a logical entity that we defined in the uh, web logic okay and to each machine we associate a corresponding node manager so machine is corresponding to a physical server in in the web logic right and each and every server we will have a node manager so in the older versions of the web logic uh, there were uh, different uh, there was a single node manager uh, on 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 a particular machine okay but now uh, from uh, 11 12 onwards we will have an option where uh, we can have the uh, multiple node managers specific to a domain that means in a machine if in a machine you will have a two domain like one for development one is for testing environment then you will have a separate node manager for development and you will have a separate node manager for testing environment okay and then we associate the node manager with the machine so that means machine is a logical entity you can say which we defined for the server on which our web logic server is running right and now when we talk about the web sphere the similar term we have is called the node okay so when we go for the configuration of the of uh, uh, machine in in the web sphere that means machine i'm talking about the web logic but the corresponding entity is the node so when we are going for the configuration in web sphere then we define the node okay so if someone is telling you the uh, the node that means it is corresponding term is the machine in the web logic server okay so overall picture that we are getting is the architecture of the of the application server is almost same the functionality and behavior of the of the different components will also be same but only thing is that the term that we refer to the different component will get changed okay and now the other is component is called the node manager so in web logic node manager is an independent utility which is bundled with the web logic and which is used for the remote management of the managed server remote management in the sense if we have a horizontal clustering where we have the different managed server scattered across the different machines in the horizontal cluster okay then we need the administration of the complete domain from the single admin console right 
and we have uh, only one admin server and only one admin console in a cluster uh, in a domain so if we have a domain which is scattered across the different uh, machines okay then your admin console or your admin server need to reach each and every managed server for the synchronizations of the configurations and for the proper functioning in coordination with the cluster right so to reach the machines which is on the uh, remote machine that means to reach the managed server which is on the remote machines your admin server use the node manager for the communication okay so your admin server contact to node manager and your node manager contact to the corresponding managed server which is running on that particular machine right so same uh, functionality is here in the web sphere as well okay and the component which is corresponding to the node manager in in your web sphere which is called a node agent okay some uh, uh, some configurations and functionalities are different for example when we uh, create the node in the web sphere okay it automatically create the node agent for you okay so but in weblogic when we configure the machine we have to separately configure the node manager as well okay for example when we uh, defined a, a machine from the console okay then after creating the machine when you click on the uh, on your machine then you will see an option for the node manager a different tab for the node manager where you have to specify the ip address and port of your node manager right which is running on this machine on your server right but here when we when we configure the node okay in the web sphere then it will automatically register a node agent so what will happen now if i talk about the uh, the web logic in a nutshell then we will have a domain where we have an admin server admin console is running on the admin server and then we have a multiple managed servers and then we have a cluster of where we have a grouping of managed servers and then to control the managed server which is on the remote machines we use the node manager okay so in fact not only the uh, remote machines if you have the managed server which is running on the same machine where you have your admin server and if you would like to start your managed server from the admin console then the configuration node of the node manager is must okay you can start the managed servers from the command line without node manager but if you are going to start the managed servers from the admin console even it is running on the same machine where you have your admin server you need to configure the node manager right and now if we go to the web sphere in the same way then after the installation of the web sphere we will have a cell which is where we have to configure the different resources inside that you will have a deployment manager on on your deployment manager you will have an admin console or you can say a management console deployed which is used for the centralized configuration of your web sphere environment okay and then you have your different app servers or servers or managed servers okay inside your domain or inside your cell specifically in web sphere and all the managed server if you have multiple managed servers or app servers in the web sphere okay they can be grouped in a cluster and this cluster can be a vertical or it, this, this can be a horizontal just like web logic okay and then to control your uh, uh, your app servers on web sphere which is running on the remote machine you have to configure a node and when you will configure a node it will automatically configure a node, node agent for you which you can use for controlling your remote app servers in the web sphere so this is a small comparison of the core component of the web sphere and web logic and if you uh, really like to learn the web sphere then all these components are very important for you to understand okay and once you have a complete clarity of all these components then you can go ahead for the uh, further study of the web sphere okay so this was the first video and then now uh, we are going to have uh, uh, some more interesting videos in in near future thank you